Hello everyone and welcome to another Super Science video with the Mastodon Regional Library. I'm Ms. Stephanie, one of the children's librarians here at the Youth Services Department, and today we're going to continue our series on simple machines with the lever. And now the lever is a long, it's a pretty, it's a simple machine. It has a long arm and a fulcrum, which is the center where it rotates or pivots. And a seesaw is the most famous example of a lever in action. And Actually, we're going to build on that today and do what's build a device, which is levers, but it's called a compound machine because we have two levers working together, and we are going to do that to make our very own grabber. It kind of looks like a robot arm, and so as you can see, it's rotating on these little brads right here, and that's the fulcrum of this, and the two levers are working together to grab something which one lever by itself couldn't do. And so you'll just need a few things around your place to make this grabber. First is a pair of adult scissors, and this is actually a compound machine as well because it has, this is the fulcrum and the blades are the two levers. So you will need them because they need to be a little sharp. Have an adult around for this one. Then just, you're going to need some thin cardboard like out of a cereal box or soda cans. Um, you'll just need enough to cut six strips out, a pencil to trace, some craft sticks to make little grabbers at the end, a ruler. You'll need seven of these little metal brads. A thumbtack works to make the holes a little bigger. You may need a binder clip, duct tape, and glue. You can, if you have a hot glue gun around your place, that will make this go a lot faster, but you can still use Elmer's glue. You're just gonna have to wait about 30 minutes for the strips to dry before you do, you test out your grabber. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and make the lever part of our robot arm grabber. And so we'll have the ruler, the cardboard, pencil, and some sharp scissors. I'll have an adult around for these. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna trace six strips out on the cardboard. You can do them different sizes. But I'm going to do the size that I found that worked the best for me. So we're going to start by measuring. Pull the ruler down. Let me flip it over actually for a second because we're going to do 10 inches long. So I'm going to make, go to the 10 and go all the way down to the zero. Now, the width of the ruler is about an inch and a fourth. So it made a good, good width for our grabber. So I'm going to come over here. Start at the 10, go all the way down, and then, oh, it's actually exactly one inch and a quarter. So then I'm going to just do another line so we know where to stop. And this will be three strips. You're probably going to need another thing of cardboard. I actually have mine right here to make the other three strips. But I'm just going to show you how to make one right now. So then we're going to cut it out. Have an adult around, so turn this off, then cut up. I'm just gonna cut it to the end and then do the same for this line. Okay, and then go across. All right, they, oh, need to cut this a little more. So look, all right. And I'm gonna put these aside. You're gonna be doing the same thing for all six of your strips. Now, take the first one and you're gonna make it so the ends touch together like this. And then carefully fold it in half. Now, if you use the hot glue gun, this part won't take very long, but if you don't have a hot glue gun, Elmer's glue works great. It's just going to take about maybe 30 to 40 minutes to dry. So then we'll reopen our strip and we'll put some in here. Just a light layer, not too thick so it doesn't leak out, but enough that it'll stay shut. And then we'll close it together. And then to help it press together when it dries, I found that these little binder clips are really helpful. You could also put a stack of books or other heavy objects on top of them as they dry. So. Uh, so let's come back in a few minutes after I've made all my strips and they've dried.
Okay, so now we have our six strips or levers that we're going to be using to make our grabber. I've already poked holes in them, but I'm going to show you how you need to poke them to make the brads go through. So what I do is, a uh, sharpened pencil works pretty well, but I found that these thumbtacks worked the best. So you're going to want to do one at the top, but leave a little bit of room, maybe about half an inch. Put one on the bottom about the same amount and then put one in the middle. Now it's important to make sure that the, all the holes on the strips are even. So what I did, and I felt this worked really well, is I lined the strips up together and then I just poked a hole through the hole through the other piece of cardboard. And while it didn't go through all the way, it did show me where I needed to make the hole. So I did that with all six of my strips. Now, so let me put this aside, and then what we're going to do is we're going to make three X's to start with. So let's do this. So make sure the holes line up on top of each other. Get your one of your brads. You're going to need about seven brads. And then make sure it goes through the other hole. I think I might have to make this one a little bigger. Oh, no, it fit. Okay. So then you see you got one X, so we would turn it over and we fold the metal brad out so it will stay. So one X, so put that up here. Then we'll make the second X. Put the brad in, line it up in the middle with the other one. There we go. Turn it so it looks like an X and then flip it over. There's our second X. I'll stack it up here. And then finally, our third one. So put a brad right here. Okay. And here is our third X. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to line these up like this. And we're going to connect them in these two places right here together with the other four brads. So let's see, let's put this one aside. We'll start with the back one. So the ends are not gonna have brads in them, just the middle ones. So let's start with this. So we'll put the brad in. You want the middle one to be on top of the one on the left side. Put it in there. There we go. Sometimes it may take a while to get through and then make sure, there we go. And then put the, pull the brad so it's out so it will stay in place. Then line up these two right here. So we'll put the brad in. Okay, and flip it over. Make sure that you open the brad May take a while ago. There we go. I had to use my finger now. So this is the first part, and then we're gonna do the same thing from the other part. And what we'll do is we'll line it up. So this is the top is on the top and the bottom is on the bottom below the middle portion. So we're gonna put this spread in, put it in here, flip it over. Make sure it goes out. Oops, sorry, I hit the camera by accident. Then we're going to do the same for this side. Oop, I'm having a little trouble with this one. All right, hold on a second. Okay, I'm going to have to use my thumbtack to make this hole a little bigger. I didn't make it quite big enough. And it should fit this time. Yes, there we go, that was the trick. And then flip it over and make sure that the metal part is open. So, you have the grabber and it works pretty well, but it doesn't look like it would do a great job of lifting anything. So what I would suggest doing is, I'm using craft sticks, but you can try different things around your place, paper clips maybe. And I'm going to put the tape over Secure it in place. Duct tape works great, although if you don't have it, masking tape will work pretty well too. And then the other one. And you want these kind of at an angle like this. Oh, sorry, hit that camera again. 
like this so that they'll have room to grab. So we'll attach the other one with the duct tape. All right, and yes, this looks like it might, I might have to move them a little farther apart, hold on. So let's see. Okay, oop, got, that's even closer. That's not what I meant to do. Okay, there we go, that's better. And then, let's see. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. All right, well, let's see our grabber in action. All right, it's time to test our grabber out. I have a few things here. I have a stuffed monkey that I found, a tissue and a book holder, the whole book's on display. So let's see which one, which of these objects that our little grabber can get. Let me try the tissue first, let's see. Nope, gotta get a better grip. Yes, the grabber can get the tissue. So we'll put that aside. All right, let's try the monkey. All right, let's try around his tail. Oh, a little bit. Might have to re-angle. Get him maybe around the neck. Not really. Um, it may take some time, and I may need to put something else on the end to make it more accurate to grab. I'm gonna try one more time, and then we'll... Mm, oh, oh, I got him. Here's the monkey. Oh, he dropped, but I have an idea. He does work. And then let's try the book display holder. So I'm going to get it around the little black edges, clamp it shut, and lift. Oh, it was able to lift that too. So just experiment around, see how heavy of an object you can grab with it or what types of objects can grab it. So go have fun. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed making your robot arm grabber and just experiment with it, like adding stuff like more craft sticks or paper clips just to see how it can be better at lifting things up or even heavier objects up. And I'm just going to finish up with a few books that I used when I was making this video. The first is Robots and Drones. This is part of our science comic series, and since we made a robot arm, I thought it would be cool to learn more about them. And I learned that there's some things that are, are all around us that are robots, like a thermostat, which changes the temperature without us having to do anything, a coffee machine, one of those little vacuums that goes around the floor. And this just talks about the history of them and also drones, which we sometimes see in the sky. And I like it because it's a story of um, two kids ex trying to figure out how robots came to be. And so a lot of great information in here. I think my favorite part in the is in the back where it does a visual timeline of some of our most famous robots and satellites. So I would just highly recommend this if you're interested in learning more about how robots work and the history behind them. And also, I, this is more of a fun book, but it's still very good. It features one of our famous compound machines, the scissors, which are two lovers put together and it's called The Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors. And you may have played that game before, but did you know that there is an interesting story of how it came to be? And this book will explore that story, how the three came together. And it's just really, it's just really a fun story. And if it's, you can read it more than once because if you look at the pictures carefully, there's like little funny things that you may not have noticed the first time. So I will not spoil the ending for you, but just know that this is a story worth, worth reading. So thank you again for joining me for another super science video. I look forward to sharing more experiments with you soon. Have a good day. Bye.